CataractCoach.com, optimizing the incision in RKIs. Radial keratotomy makes the entire surgery far more challenging. First thing is that paracentesis. Notice how it is between two RK cuts. Do not intersect the RK cuts. Evenly place there between the two and for convenience for the left hand to use the chopper. That's anesthetic going inside the eye. Now, this patient has eight cut RK. Remember, these RK incisions are usually 90% depth or more. That means only 50 microns or so of remaining corneal tissue that was not touched. That's very little. That's less than the thickness of a hair. Now, here's the main incision. Look, you use the diamond. Again, right between the two RK cuts, starting there at the peripheral edge there of the limbus, nicking the limbal vessels, getting an appropriate tunnel length, and then entering the AC. Now, this is a 1.8 millimeter diamond, so I'll have to slightly enlarge the incision to about 2.2 millimeters. Notice how we want to stay even between the two RK cuts. Do not intersect the RK cuts. That is really the most important take-home message. Look at the limbal vessels that are slightly bleeding from both the para and the main incision. Again, that's our goal because that's going to ensure great long-term healing and stability of those incisions. Now, we're creating our capsule rexes. The rest of the cataracts is going to proceed pretty normally. We do have good videos of explaining how to do the eye well calculations in radial keratotomy eyes. If you go back to Sunday, August 28th, our IOL calc lesson was just about RKIs and how I do the calculations. Again, you can go to cataractcoach.com and look under lens calculations and radial keratotomy and you'll see it there. Much harder to find on YouTube. The website's much easier. So here comes the cataract. We're going to get this out pretty quickly. I've sped up the video here to twice normal speed and that goes pretty smooth. Now remember what happens during FACO in an RKI Remember I told you there's only about 50 microns of tissues remaining untouched at the RK cuts? Well, even if you're doing a very efficient cataract surgery like this, the infusion of fluid going inside the eye and the infusion pressure can cause swelling of the RK cuts temporarily. Now, this temporary swelling means that the central cornea may be a little flatter. So in the immediate post-op period, post-op day one, it's normal if you measure the keratometry to see that the K values are now even flatter in the center. But don't worry, this fluid that goes through and causes the swelling does resolve. And give the patient a couple of weeks and that swelling goes back to normal and the patient's K values or keratometry should return to the exact same level they were preoperatively. So average K value is not going to change. Again, it'll go back to normal. And the patient will shift from being slightly hyperopic on post-op day one to going right towards plano, which is, of course, our goal, or maybe even a little minus. So cleaning up the capsule bag here, a little bit of capsule polishing. Again, you don't want to spend too much time in the eye because you don't want to induce more and more of that swelling of the RK cuts. And now with the cataract out, you can see those eight RK cuts are very prominent. Viscoelastic going in to fill the capsule bag, cohesive viscoelastic. Notice I go through the main incision because I don't want to highly pressurize the eye. I want the bag filled, but I want the IOP to be normal or on the low side, at most 20 millimeters of mercury. Here comes the IOL. Now, it's a higher power lens. We're going to use a wound assist technique. So notice how the injector tip doesn't go all the way in the incision. Instead, we push the um, lens through that incision tunnel, and that's the wound assist technique. And now we'll get the IOL on the capsule bag. And this allows us to place this thicker lens, which requires a bigger injector tip, through a small incision. So we're able to use a 2.2 millimeter incision. And again, this patient has a 25.5 doctor. There it is, um, monofocal IOL. So this patient, again, was myopic prior to having radial keratotomy. The RK made the patient pretty close to emetropia or a plano outcome for many years. And over time, as you know, we say RK is the gift that keeps on giving. It makes the cornea even flatter decades later, and the patient ended up drifting into hyperopia. And so that's why we needed such a high power 25.5 diopter lens. And this patient ended up absolutely on target with a post-op refraction of Plano and 2020 vision. Watch how I hydrate the incision. Only the roof at mid stroma, gently. Do not aim towards the walls because that'll allow that fluid to go right into the RK cut, and believe me, it can absolutely open up the RK cut. 
So if you do any wound hydration, just to the roof and in the midstroma. A little bit of triamcinolone going inside the eye, that's preservative free. And then we'll put in some BSS to sort it around. And then finally, some moxifloxacin preservative free antibiotic as well. Now, everything looks great here and patient's ready to go, but do yourself a favor. At the end of the case, when you think you're done, like I'm done, get a fluorescein strip. And I check every incision. Yes, I have my main incision and my paracentesis, but I check every RK incision too. I just want to make sure nothing is leaking. And we do a dye test here and you can see there's absolutely no leakage. So we can wash that off and we can double check the incisions even one more time with the sponge. You can see they're absolutely watertight. Wow, what a beautiful outcome. Thanks for watching.